Councillor Irving, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the opportunity to be part of this event. And I wanted to say thank you so much to the IHF and the AAHA for putting on an exceptionally fascinating, intriguing, challenging, stimulating and otherwise event. And on that little note, can I just ask you to give a big round of applause to all of the volunteers, please. who gave their time so generously. And now it is my absolute honour to leave you in the extremely safe hands of Eric um, de Rudenbeck, who of course is the CEO of the IHF. It's Eric. Eric de Rudenbeck, I'm the CEO of the International Hospital Federation, and I will take you through the, this uh, session. This is our closing session. As we say in my home country, every good thing must come to an end. We have heard our host speakers always paying tribute to the, those owning the land and to the elders. And indeed, as IHF CEO, I have a special tribute to pay to Australia. First, I want to recognize Errol Pickering, Errol was the CEO of AHA, at that time there was only one H, in the 80s, but he became the CEO of the International Hospital Federation. So there are these uh, links between IHF and Australia that are bound in the time. I want personally to pay tribute to a Professor Ellen Lapsley. She was a board member to IHF, and she was part of the recruitment committee. So I honor to be here with you to, to that today. Uh, paying tribute to the past is very important, but we also have to move to the past present. And for that, I really want to sp pay special recognition to John Wakefield, the Deputy DG, Clinical Excellence, and of course to Queensland. He has played an important role making this uh, uh, Congress coming to Queensland and, and being uh, for me being with you to today. I want, of course, to pay tribute to Paul Dugdale, the president of the scientific committee, to Deborah Cole, the chair of AAHA, to Alison Verhoeven, the CEO, to Liz and Robley, the event manager, and to all the team of AAHA that has been behind the scene, and to love all of you who have participated. Let's move in the time, and let's have a quick look at some of the, the moments that we have spent together.
In the last sessions, it was about three keywords. I, I think that with all these familiar faces that we have seen, it was about joy, passion, and commitment. I hope you had a chance to go to look at the poster that was displayed, as well as uh, to visit the exhibition booth. The posters are always a good opportunity to drill down some excellent initiative, projects, and re research. And we want to recognize that in IHF. So we have a price to recognize that, and we have a panel jury. The panel jury that has uh, worked uh, hard to identify the best posters is uh, Dr. Samin Siddiqui, the chair of the Department of Community uh, Health Science in Aga Khan University, Karachi, pa Pakistan. Dr. Rebecca Adok, manager in the Dibla Institute, uh, AHA. And Charlie Evans, president of International Health Service Group and honorary member of the IHF. Let me invite the judge to come on the, on the stage. So, uh, good afternoon uh, once again. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it has been a pleasure, for, of course, for me to be here, to be part of this conference, to come to this great country. Um, of course, um, we were a panel of three judges. Of course, with me is Rebecca, whom I'm sure you all know pretty much. Uh, we also had Charlie Evans from the US. Unfortunately, he had to leave, so he's not with us today. Uh, and of course, we were ably supported by Patricia, who is one of the members of the IHF, and I think she did a wonderful job as well. Um, so I think the, we had over 100 uh, posters, of which we were shortlisted about 30. Uh, and I'd like to acknowledge the impressive work that was done by many of you, actually. Uh, and it was very innovative, very, very impressive posters. And of course, it was a, it was a real task for us to be able to, uh, to shortlist and then come with, a num with, a, with the number of awards that we are, we are going to be offering now. Uh, so in terms of that, there are sort of, there's a gold winner, uh, there's a silver winner, there is a bronze winner, and then there are four merit awardees. Um, the gold winner will receive a complimentary registration for the 2019 World Hospital Congress, which will be announced, I'm sure, which will be held next year in, in uh, Muscat in Oman. Um, I would ask Eric, if you're, where are you, Eric? Yeah, so why don't you kindly come and actually announce the names of the winners, and then perhaps we can ho hand them over the certificates. Thank you very much, and it will be my pleasure, and uh, I guess you will help me by holding the certificates uh, around. So, as uh, Samin said, we really had uh, a lot of uh, very good posters. So, let me first congratulate bridging the gap between primary care and tertiary healthcare services to improve low back pain. I call Christine Ferzalo from Mary Health to receive on the, in the stage the Merit Award. Thank you very much. Another project which is particularly interesting because it's here and there, if I can say, responding to the Syrian and Iraqi crisis, a local refugee health partnership to build an integrated care response. May I call on Lynn Schmidt from Metro South Refugee Health Service, Metro South Health. Leveraging on a national performance management initiative, National University Hospital journey of improving its indicators of concern, may I call on Donna Joy Penanuva, National University Hospital. And the last merit award, in innovative design for quality improvement in patient flow, waiting period, and workforce utilization using data-informed decision-making. May I call Shalomi Sadarash from Darling Down Hospital and Health Service to re receive the award? Uh, now, uh, the bronze winner 
which is developing patient safety system through applying WHO tool and reaching experience from Oman. May I call Samra Salim Hal Barwani and Safana Salim Mohammed Hal Saidi from Ministry of Health from Oman. So the silver winner has a bonus because it's going to be called twice. Using data science to address two major problems in hospital daily practices, readmission and day to discharge. May I call Jordi Altes from Hospital Plato from Barcelona, Spain to join us. The gold winner goes to Dynamics of Peer Learning in Medical Department, Journal and Case Sharing Club. May I call Gary Tong Yun Cho from Tang Chiu King Hospital from Hospital Authority Hong Kong to receive the award. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing you in Oman. Thank you, Thank, you. Very Thank you very much to much. the hard work done by the jury, and let's move on. May I call on the stage Professor um, Omar to, uh, to come uh, and uh, Deborah Cole from the Australian Healthcare Hospital Association. We have uh, a handover ceremony between the current host and the next host. Deborah, let's, I'll let you do the handover. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Well, I'm still here wearing the hat. Um, and I've only got a few hours to go, so thank you. Um, colleagues, I'm sure that you would agree that we've had a pretty fabulous con con conference. Um, and even though it's been a lot of work for the Australian Healthcare and Hospitals Association, supported by Queensland Health, and all of our sponsors and other partners, we wouldn't have had it any other way. We still have our sundowner session to go, and it's full of Aussie prizes and surprises, and um, including food and drink with an Australian flavour, and I think Ursula's sort of given you a bit of a hint that we eat a lot of the animals that we have here. Uh, but maybe once in a lifetime, you'll get a chance to um, get a close-up version of some of our Australian native animals. And for, so, for a lot of the Australians, like me, where I live in a place where I've got koalas in my backyard and kangaroos in my front yard eating everything that I have um, in the garden, um, we probably won't be quite so keen on cuddling, but we actually recognise that for lots of people, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so please take it up. So um, there'll be lots of photos that you can take, that you can take home to your family um, and share. So after the euphoria of, of almost seeing this conference through, um, there are lots of emotions that come about as a result of that. On one hand, we feel some regret um, that comes with acknowledging the passage of time and the fact that something great and is coming to an end and all the connections that we formed um, over the last three days. Um, but on the other hand, we feel a great deal of expectation and the hope and the excitement at the prospect of a new beginning and the pleasure and satisfaction of passing the baton on to someone new, someone enthusiastic and someone to keep up the 89-year-old tradition alive and, dare I say, also um, in excellent health. So with that, a mix of thoughts whirling in my head, and it's still my great, it is now my great pleasure to pass the honour of running the 43rd World Hospital Congress to the Sultanate of Oman, and more specifically to Professor Oman Alwal, um, who's a representative for the Ministry of Health of Oman. Um, I won't be passing you a baton as such, but instead I'm going to be passing on to you a set of Aboriginal clapsticks now, clap sticks are a percussion instrument dating back tens of thousands of years. They're traditionally made from the local eucalyptus hardwood, 
and usually accompany other famous wooden Aboriginal musical instruments, the bassoon-like didgeridoo. Um, and when you strike one stick against the other, um, you end up with a distinctive and harsh rapping sound that's made. And the sound of those um, sticks are basically their rhythm and percussion instruments, and they're part of the story or song of the country. So I trust, Omar, that in organising the 43rd session of the World Hospital Congress, you'll be marching and dancing to the beat of your own instruments, your own music, and that helps keep the World Hospitals Congress fresh and alive. But having said that, I also hope these clapsticks punctuate your rhythm every now and then to remind you of the great time that you've all had at the 42nd World Hospital Congress and to remind you to invite us Aussies to the 43rd World Cong Hospital Congress in your ancient and beautiful city of Muscat. So thank you and please accept this gift on behalf of the people of Australia. Good afternoon, everybody. It is my honor and actually a great pleasure uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Health of Oman to be with you today. First, to congratulate the Brisbane team on this very successful uh, conference, which was very rich in, in content and also the social activities. It, it is an a challenge for us for the next, uh, the, the next uh, conference. I'd like also uh, to thank, on behalf of the Minister of Health, the International Hospital Federation for giving us the opportunity and the privilege to organize the uh, 43rd World Hospital Congress, IHF Muscat 2019, which will be held between 7th and 9th of November 2019. Uh, in, uh, we will go through a short uh, video that will highlight what you may, uh, what we can, what we uh, will be t to offer, and it will be about just highlight because it is only three minutes highlights of uh, the, the country and also the the conference venue. Maybe I will have a little opportunity after that to to elaborate a little more. So without overdo, I would like to. To, to start the video. Uh, before 1970, uh, there was nothing of uh, well-known health sectors existing in Oman. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos uh, took over in 1970. At that time, we have 13, one, three hospital beds only in the country, and 21 physicians. Today, as we speak, the number of physicians in Oman exceeded 8,600. The number of hospitals more than 60, and Oman was rated one of the fastest developing country in human development. The center where this uh, conference will be held is very nicely and well situated few minutes from the airport, uh, a minute or two from the major highway. We have beautiful cities outside Muscat that hopefully the guests will uh, visit and see the culture of, of Oman as well. Uh, the unique thing about Oman, uh, it is living in the 21st century, there's huge development, but we did not compromise our heritage and history and culture.
Th thank you. The theme of the conference will be people in the heart of health services in peace and crisis. And we, this is a challenge for us, but we, we believe that we can be that, the challenge and beyond. Maybe some of you don't know much about Oman. I hope you had the chance to, to visit the booth, uh, which is immediately uh, after the entry to the exhibition center, the, the, ex the exhibition hall. And it has some information. If you haven't had, maybe you can take the opportunity after this uh, session. Uh, the Oman is known, uh, Oman is a very quiet country. And because of that, it is not in the news. And I think this is a good news uh, in, in, this, in these times. Uh, the Oman is characterized being the country of heritage and peace. But more importantly, also uh, about very welcoming people. So we look forward to having you there and uh, would be a privilege to serve you in Oman. Thank you very much. I think we have all marked your calendars, 7th to 9th of November. Check up on internet the flights, book them as soon as possible. Let me call Dr. Francisco Balestrin, the IHF president, who is going to say a few words for the closing uh, the remarks from the IHF. Dr. Balestrin, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for an, an excellent Congress. I would especially like to thank the Australian Healthcare and Hospital Association for their investment of time, hard work, and resources in the organization of this Congress. They have been wonderful hosts and have shown that Australia is not only a leader in healthcare quality, but a leader in ideas as well. To the IHF Governing Council, I also thank you. The IHF joins great leaders of hostels from around the world. My friends, I am humbled to have your guidance and support in our discussions on how to change hostels for the future. I'm also personally happy to have been joined by a Brazilian delegation with new members of the IHF, the members of the Brazilian Federation of Hospitals. This Congress has been watershed for hostels. In the last three days, we have seen many brilliant speakers that have shown, shown us that innovation integration and inspiration is not only desirable, but necessary. This year's Congress has put patients and not hostels at the focus of attention. That is exactly where patients deserve to be. In many of our countries, including my own, we have structured attention around hostels and not around patients. This is a mistake. Hostels are complex institutions. Creating better hostels is a huge challenge that could provide us with content for many congresses and many years of discussion. We must remind ourselves, however, that our job is not to create better hostels. It's to create better health and better health care for our patients. And, somet and sometimes that happens outside the walls of hostels. As we have seen, that hostels can do more for patients as a part of an uh, ecosystem, not as isolated institutions. I hope that you all return to your homes inspired to transcend the walls of our hostels and deliver better care and more value for, for our patients in an, integ in an integral and integrated manner. Have a safe trip home and see you next year in Oman. Thank you, Australia. See you, Oman. Bye-bye. Let me call Dr. Deborah Cole for a few last remarks. I know that you are between us and the, really the sun down. Uh, we hope that there is no veggie demonstrator outside. From what I heard, we are going to have in the next minutes. Thank you so much.
Well, we're prepared. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, a really terrible thing to be between. Um, I'm between you and the beer. So, um, thank you very much, Francisco. Really appreciate, and also Eric. Um, in Taipei last year, I accepted on behalf of uh, Australia the hosting rights for this Congress. Um, and at the time, I said that all Aussies, including the Health Minister, the Honourable Greg Hunt, were so proud that the International Hospital Federation had chosen Australia to be the next host. Um, I gave our host from Taiwan um, a curious artefact from Australia called a boomerang from our Aboriginal First Peoples, and I hope you've all been buying them while you've been here. Um, and this was full knowledge that if a boomerang was thrown um, the right way, while well, it does spin back to the person that um, uh, threw it. So we were hoping that you would all come back to us here in Australia, and you have. Um, and it did bring a lot of our Taiwanese hosts back to Brisbane, um, Australia, for this year, and we really thank them for joining us. Um, I promised that, I also promised at the beginning that um, the weather would be um, beautiful one day and perfect the next. Maybe I had a bit of rain in there, but it was still pretty wonderful, I think. But it's rain that in Australia we, we fairly desperately need. Um, I also promised that the Congress would be fantastic, um, and I hope, and I think that you can see that I think we've delivered on that as well. And at the start of the Congress, I said that we would be in the cusp of big changes in healthcare services around the world that will bring big benefits to patients, to the staff and the clinicians and the administrators alike. Um, I urged delegates um, to not hold back from joining in the valuable discussions um, so that we can learn from each other and be um, inspired to take the next step um, in improving healthcare services wherever we come from. And, and make the future happen. And one of the things I've been really impressed by is watching just the huge amount of interaction and, and exchanging of cards and, the, and people, you know, sort of texting one another with their um, email addresses. And I think we've all done that. So congratulations to all of you for an amazing um, interaction and being part of this um, Congress. Um, I'm, I was going to go through a summary of the next three days, of the last three days, but I don't think it's necessary. You've all been here, you've all participated in it, but um, it has really taken us on at very strong value-based healthcare sort of um, principles. It's talked about the integration and coordination, and it's talked about how important that um, technology and data and, and understanding that data means to us all, um, and how much we can, we have still got to learn and improve. So, um, for me, there's been a pretty amazing array of talent assembled here, and the quality of the discussions has been um, intellectually mind-blowing. Um, but before we go home to recover, um, there are some people I need to thank and, and a reminder, um, and one reminder to give. So thank you again to the International Hospital Federation and to the Congress, the scientific and organising committees. They have been amazing, you can tell by the program. Um, thank you again to all our many sponsors and particularly to Queensland Health Clinical Excellence Division and Novartis Australia. Thank you to our wonderful speakers, um, our session chairs, our time keepers, all of our volunteers um, and the AWHA and Iceberg staff who have done an amazing job, all of you, and I think we'd like to give them a round of applause. Thank you. On a very important thing, just to show that we are into waste reduction, um, there are a lot of flowers from the tables last night. Um, we have actually put them at the registration desk, so any locals who would like to pick up those flowers, please take them home. We'd hate them to go to waste or into the bin, and they were a beautiful um, pile of flowers. Um, now, it brings me to the reminder. Um, we don't want you to leave before um, the um, you go to the Sundowner session in the Exhibition Hall, so that's where you go to next. Um, you'll be able to meet some real live Australian native animals. I've told there's a koala there, or koala, um, wombats, and there's even a really cuddly crocodile, for those of you who want to. You'll get to taste a true Australian um, barbecue. Um, and so for those of you from Texas, you'll go to do a bit of a comparison and see if we're on the right track. 
Um, and um, you get to win some prizes to take home too. So you've simply got to go. We want to see you there. And, and for the Australians, you've got to go and show that good Aussie hospitality that hopefully we've been showing over the last three days. Um, but now it's time to say goodbye from the Australian Healthcare and Hospitals Association. Good luck, safe travels, um, plenty of sleep on the way home, hopefully. And thank you for helping us to make this a truly amazing healthcare event for 2018. And we'll see you in Oman in 2019. Thank you.